So you want to get certified. So now what? Or as I like to more appropriately call it, SolidWorks certification preparation resources. Okay, this isn't just going to be a tips and tricks session. I realize that's the draw of a certification, I'm sorry, of a user group is tips and tricks. Okay, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot more than that here. Okay, now I feel like I'm qualified to speak about this mostly because, well, I'm a certified SolidWorks associate, right? I followed through with my certified professional. And much like Gerald, I went all the way to become, is there a lag here? There's definitely a lag. Okay, looks like the online audience or maybe it's my projector, not really sure, but there's a slight lag here. In any case, I followed through with the certified SolidWorks expert. Okay, now that's all customer facing or the things that you guys can attain if you work at it, okay? Now on my side of the fence, Although I'm passionate about certification, I got to tell you, I take more tests than I care to admit to. They're testing us all the time, sometimes multiple times a year, depending on what flavor of the month it is. And yes, 3D Experience Platform has been uh, a big certification push. Anyway, I don't want to get off topic there. But I do want to say that with all the certifications that I've taken, I've been honored with the once in a lifetime award of an elite AE with SolidWorks. Okay, so that's like the expert, but on my side of the fence. And of course, my favorite certification here is the Certified SolidWorks Instructor for Mechanical Design. Okay, I'm a teacher at heart. I try to show everybody my best tips and tricks in SolidWorks in the hopes that they will turn around and help others with it. Okay, so what is it that I actually do outside of just teaching? Well, I'm a Star Trek fan, so... Here's a runabout that I've built from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Okay, and then on Star Trek Voyager, they had the Type 9 shuttlecraft. It's very interesting looking, very cool looking. And then probably my all-time favorite, the Galaxy Class Starship from the Next Generation. Now, some of you might look at that and say, well, that's not exactly the Galaxy Class that I remember from the show. Yeah, you're right. Um, in fact, to kind of tie into what Gerald was talking about earlier, configurations, which by the way, is a huge thing for the certified professional, okay? What he covered today is gonna to be critical for one of the three exams for the certified pro. But uh, on what he was describing, different configurations, right? The actual enterprise looked like this right here. Okay, looks like it did update there. So you can see that's the regular enterprise. And then of course, uh, you know, they had that last episode with the three warp engine variants of it, right? Um, and then I've obviously gone in and made my own version of it. So here is the Excalibur. And display states, that's the other thing that Gerald had touched on briefly. Come on, leg. Are we going to catch up? Maybe the online sees it immediately, but my projector is laggy. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll click on the display state and we'll see it pop up here. Hopefully, there it goes. And so there is a partial interior here, right? So I've got a part laid out for all 42 decks and uh, specifically the hangar bay, the area that I've spent the most time on. Here we go, come on projector, there it is. Uh, so this hangar bay is actually for those runabouts and those type nine shuttlecrafts right, and the level of detail I've gone in here, and I'll try not to get too far off topic here, but this is my passion, folks, and I think in order to get certified and to be really good at this stuff, it needs to be more than just your nine to five, okay, uh, not that it's required, but yes, um, I'm a knife collector too, so that's like my entertainment center, so okay, back on task here. <laughs> um, how about movies? You guys watch movies much? Anybody see the new Ghostbusters Afterlife movie? Pretty cool, right? Well, much like most of you, I'm a Ghostbusters fan too. And yes, this lag is killing me. I keep looking up on the projector instead of uh, what the online crowd is seeing. I apologize for the distraction there online, but here you go. Okay, so there's the 3D model in SolidWorks and then my Halloween costume, right? <clears throat> okay. 
Next up, I mentioned the knives, right? So here's some of my knife collection. And talking about it being a hobby, right? You might want to consider taking items that you have around your house. In this case, this is the Star Trek Generations Klingon knife. Uh, Bator, one of the Dura sisters, had had this knife. Okay. And of course, I built a model of it. But more important uh, than just the 3D model was actually the design work that I got to do, right? That's fun. I got to take elements from the knife and use that to create a stand. And then the 3D printer, you can see I've printed a couple different stands here, right? And then of course the one-handed bat left in the back, also made by the same knife maker. That's right, Gil and I haven't dropped his name yet, but uh, amazing uh, knife maker. Okay, so with that 3D printing, I mentioned that briefly, right? 3D printing typically requires that you have different spools of material, different colors, right? So building assemblies, et cetera. Here's my uh, Captain America shield and the Perusa slicer. Don't worry, I'll get certification. I just gotta make sure you guys listen to me when I ask you to do something, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I know it's hard, okay? All right, so uh, there's a 3D printer with a multi-material unit, a Perusa unit, pretty amazing. And by the way, I do want to mention to you guys that printers these days are really inexpensive. All right. Again, one of the best ways to learn SOLIDWORKS is to make it beyond your nine to five. Okay. If you can find a 200 bucks in your budget, buy a starter printer, spool of material like 25 bucks. That'll help you learn quicker on SOLIDWORKS than anything else. Just build a lot of cool stuff, get your kids involved, et cetera. Okay, now uh, one real good example of 3D printing uh, at my church group, Brent, who is a, uh, let's see, a paraplegic. He's confined to a motorized wheelchair. Okay, and this handle right here is an Allen key that is put that way because his hand doesn't have the normal mobility that you and I would have. Okay, you can see the worn part on the end of the wrench. That's where he has to grip it. Well, using SOLIDWORKS, having a 3D printer, right? This is all something that we can solve pretty easily, right? I made a, a simple handle with a self-locking dovetail, just pop that on there, no hardware required. And it worked out very nicely. And Brent loved it. And delay there we go you know all my cool animations on the uh, video are not going to show up on the live here folks okay in any case um why am i spending all this time talking about 3d printing as my delay here pops up oh look at that there is a certification for 3d printing and by the way whose white mouse cursor is that i know it's not mine it's showing up on the thing there, but it's not on the video maybe, I don't know. I won't worry about that too much. In any case, yes, uh, if you're looking at that cert and you're like, wait, that's not your name. You're right, that is my wife's name. She got the 3D printing cert before I did. You know, <laughs> there's, there's room for, um, well, people to beat you to get there first. All right, one other quick concept about 3D printing. Um, I mentioned multiple parts, multiple spools of material, et cetera. You can embrace that using traditional manufacturing techniques, okay? Instead of just a blob of one item uh, and you're stuck with one color and nothing moves, we well, can get moving parts, moving assemblies. And come on, delay. Here's a proton pack, right? Third scale this time that I made completely out of 3D printing. Uh, you can see that I was also using like 12 gauge wires, quarter inch split room, and an Arduino ribbon cable in there, right? Okay, so there's the 3D model, which by the way is a lot different than, come on, there it goes, which is a lot different than just having a model that looks good, but one that functions. And I want to emphasize that because the 3D model you saw earlier was pale compared to what I had to do to make this thing actually work, okay? Putting stuff together, seeing how it fits. Uh, it'll definitely teach you a lot about tolerances. So, I mean, as an instructor, I do need to say that if they'll let you out in the shop, 
go out, go into the shop, right? Bury your ego for a minute and ask them, hey, what do you think of my design? <laughs> and be prepared, okay? But you will learn a lot, okay? <laughs> I guarantee it. <laughs> well, yeah, learn a lot of new words. Well, hopefully not. In fact, you know, extend the olive branch, take them out for a beer or tea or coffee or whatever. But uh, that's how we can start to learn how to communicate and design better products. And yeah, here's the third scale proton pack roughly, right? And yes, this was actually printed in large part by my wife for her Easter bunny for, uh, for Halloween. So that's her proton pack. So obviously that's a lot of fun as October's almost here again. How about that? Okay, um, the next thing I wanna talk about is FIRST Robotics. Okay, FIRST Robotics is a high school robotics team, uh, robotics program, I should say. And uh, you, you should probably check your local high school. If you're into learning more about SOLIDWORKS, finding a way to turn it into a hobby, maybe you just have way more time on your hands and you don't really have many hobbies. This would be a great place to put your time and energy into, right, the next generation. So with FIRST Robotics, uh, let's see here, wrong button <laughs> that way. Uh, the game that I helped teach the kids robotic, I'm sorry, teach SOLIDWORKS so they could apply it to their robotics. And I am proud to say that this robot was designed by them. Okay, that's pretty significant. Long story short, a lot of FIRST Robotics teams, they're only good based on the adult mentors. And it's usually kids voting on ideas instead of, kids coming up with stuff well here i flipped the script i said look you only have eight weeks to design build something we need to start the training on the software first before that eight week window that way when the design requirements come down the kids go nuts right and it's uh, turned out very very well and i'm pleased to say that my students won the very first Arizona Interscholastic Association Robotics Championship. So it works, right? If you take the time to incorporate it into your hobby and share it with others. That's not me, is it? Don't think so. All right, in any case, um, cell phone going off, <laughs> whatever's going on. Uh, the following year, uh, success sometimes has negative consequences. A lot of the kids went off to do other things because they're like, been there, done that, we're done. In any case, that's also the year that SOLIDWORKS World was in town. So I got to take some of the team there. All right, I know we're talking about certification, but why oh, why am I wasting time on that? Well, I do want to mention a <clears throat> blog that I wrote, CAD for Kids. Okay, whom I shared with Marie Planchard, the head of SOLIDWORKS Education. I'm sorry guys for the lag there. And uh, she loved the idea so much so that she got programmed SOLIDWORKS apps for kids. Okay, so I have some cards up here on the table. If you have any kids that are between six and 12, then I highly recommend you get them signed up I don't know what the lag is. Sorry, folks, I'll try not to vocalize the lag too much more on the recording. It's probably gonna be really annoying. In any case, uh, please get your youngster signed up. It'll operate on their mobile phone, a tablet, whatever, okay? It is cloud-based. And if you're asking, well, where did SOLIDWORKS find the resources to do this? Just think of the 3D Experience platform. This is kind of like one of the beta testing grounds for that. So it's a win-win. SOLIDWORKS gets usage data. Your youngster gets the idea that engineering and design is a lot of fun. You inspire them, maybe change their life, right? That's perfect. Okay, so there it is, SOLIDWORKS apps for kids. All right, so let's get on with it. Welcome to my SOLIDWORKS certification mountain, the virtual recreation area. Right, uh, here's the website, and it, you, once it pops up here, uh, this resource center is for everybody to uh, start their journey on SOLIDWORKS. Now, 
keep in mind that there are 17 different certifications. There are different levels of certifications. There's the associate level, the professional level, the advanced professional level, and the expert level. Okay. Now, for Gerald to earn his expert, he had to first become a professional, right? Then he had to pass at least four of the five advanced exams, right? And after doing all that testing, then he had to pass the expert exam after that. Okay, so if you're doing the math, that's five tests just to get the honor to take the expert. So that's six total certifications to earn at minimum. That, by the way, that's not counting the certified SOLIDRX associate, right? Because, you know, that's not a requisite for the expert. All right, and by the way, there's actually more than 17, right? <laughs> there is now 19 certifications as of today, right? And they're adding more all the time based on customer demands. Yeah. Now, uh, one of the latest ones is the Certified SOLIDWORKS Professional for Flow Simulation, and then one for API Programming. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Here's Certification Mountain. You can start with your associate, go for your professional, and if you can, go all the way for expert. And of course, this is in the way, so I'll move it off to the side. That should be a little bit better. Okay, now that you've kind of seen the potential for the certs, are you ready to begin your certification journey? Now, make sure that you're serious before just saying yes, okay? You'll need to stick with your goal if you intend to finish it. Because I mean, at what level? If we just go after an associate, that'll take a little bit of time. But if you wanna go after your professional, well, you might need to work on that during the weekends, maybe after hours, whatever. But again, if it's a hobby, no big deal. Let's see here, anything worth doing? requires that maximum effort, okay? So bear that in mind. <clears throat> All right, the excuses that I hear a lot. Uh, let's see here, adjust that down perhaps. <clears throat> well, I'll get around to it, but frankly, I'm just too busy, right? I'm already working, I'm, I'm busy with my project, I just don't have time for it right now. Well, that's potentially true in the near term, but uh, here's some time for tough love, right? The reality is you are going to need a solder certification at some point, okay? Um, <clears throat> and by the way, it's only after people get laid off that they start to decide, oh my goodness, maybe I need a certif certification. Okay, many reasons for this. Just least among that is SOLIDRX creates a huge ego, right? So let's see here. Yeah, why is it such a big deal? Um, well, most people are like, hey, I'm a super user with the software and everybody already knows that. Okay. So there's the guy in the bullhorn letting everybody know if they didn't already know beforehand, they should now. But here's the truth, right? Anybody who's accomplished a decent project in the software and accomplished great stuff, all of a sudden they're the hero of their story. And that's fine, but are they really? It's just what they've been exposed to, okay? And by the way, this includes college students because their capstone project done in SOLIDWORKS, that was amazing. And comparatively speaking, absolutely, it was great, right? So that's good, but what's the official measuring stick? That's important. <clears throat> All right, so what is actually happening? Well, part of it, there's a skills gap and it's getting wider and wider due to software enhancements. Why is that a problem? Well, my supporting evidence here, uh, each new release targets 
not only performance, which yeah, it's never fast enough, right? But also user requested changes or adjustments to the program. Like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we could automate A, B, and C to make this combo feature or super feature if you prefer? Again, that automation makes us look amazing. But then the question is, is it the software or is it me? And if you have that question, obviously companies have that question. Well, did you do it or did SolidWorks do it? Because I got to tell you, SolidWorks can make pretty much anybody that spends any time on it look pretty good. Okay. So you like the snail there trying to get across the gap, right? Okay. So what happens if the automatic super features or combo features don't work in the situation you find yourself in? Well, <clears throat> that is definitely the problem. Okay, many reasons to do this, self-improvement, right? Most companies want their employees to set a yearly goal for growth. Like, hey, what are you gonna learn this year? What are you gonna improve this year? Well, some of us scratch our head and we're like, be better at my job. I mean, that, that sounds good. Everybody wants to say that, but how do we qualify that? Well, in this case here, you know, the certification can help you do that, okay? So instead of just trying to crawl across that gap, we'll install some engines on our snail here and you can zoom across the gap, right? So some side effects here, uh, you'll become more productive using the software, okay? You'll learn to create robust models that won't necessarily blow up after the first change. Okay, hey, we might even get that ever elusive raise that we all want. Or perhaps you're eyeing a promotion. Again, if you get better at your job, you start to delegate and teach them to do what you used to do. Okay, it's a win-win. All right, <clears throat> so what does the company get out of all this? Well, the company benefits include they're able to set a baseline for all of their users, right? I can find out where everybody's at. And if they need training, I can address that need as well. In fact, true story, Edwards Life Sciences out in San Diego. Okay, I'm working with Tim Humphreys out there. And one of the things that he's trying to push over there, he's trying to get all 400 of the employees to be at least an associate. Okay, why are they doing that? Well, right here, the company benefits. Um, by eliminating the perception of what solders can do versus what it can actually do will help eliminate that as being a hang up for design. Okay, the dirty little secret is we tend to design based on what we think that the software can do. And we're like, well, yeah, that's possible. All I need to do and then they start going into a feature replay in their head of how they're gonna do that task that they're being asked to do. And anytime you approach somebody with a problem and they don't know how to do it in the software themselves, not that the software can't do it, but because they cannot, the answer is no, I can't. And then people are like, wow, that software is no good. Okay, <laughs> and then that's unfair, all right? So <laughs> moving forward. Uh, well, each company has tribal knowledge, okay? One of the best things you can do in your model is to communicate, right? If you stack it with feature comments and tell others what that model is doing, you're gonna be able to spread that entire communication for that part among your team, all right? <clears throat> this would lead to improved quality for your designs. Obviously, everybody be more productive. Your manufacturing team gets more accurate models. Okay, and this, of course, helps to produce a positive community culture. You'll have a community of users. They'll all have an expected level of certification, right, of knowledge on the tool that they all love and use. Okay. All right, so remember the Boy Scouts motto, be prepared. Unfortunately, business can be a roller coaster. 
And there are some things that are well beyond your control. Okay, these things that are beyond your control, I'm gonna encourage you to take control of your career and be prepared for them. So the things that, yeah, could be out of your control might be new management priorities, right? They wanted you to do on this project, now they're gonna shift projects or maybe the project you were exclusively assigned to and they have nothing else for you to do, right? They basically take away a project and you're left with nothing to do. I'll let you imagine what happens next. Okay, moving facilities. Oh, we're gonna uproot our plant. We're moving somewhere else. Do you wanna uproot your family and move with them? That's up to you, okay, or buyouts. Right, this is another big one. <clears throat> if your company gets gobbled up by a bigger company, happens all the time, okay? So will you be retained during the buyout? I don't know, that's an individual question, okay? Or of course the dreaded layoff, right? If you get laid off, you're out of work, that's tough. Because now we're back to where I started, which is, oh my goodness, I need a certification. And that's why I'm starting this way here. Okay, um, because I'm doing this certification project with Go Engineer, I talk to a lot of people, a lot of my students. I've been teaching since 2004. Some of you might have even been in my class. And if I don't recognize you, I sincerely apologize. I don't have a photographic memory but I will give you my best, I can promise that. Uh, bottom line, I get that phone call about every six months to eight months, hey Joe, I got laid off. And I was asked the same question, by the way, did you follow up on certification? And the answer I usually get is, oh yeah, yeah, we were talking about that, but no, I haven't. I was like, but now it's harder. You don't have access to SolidWorks and you don't have a certification voucher that your SolidWorks subscription paid for. What, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Yeah, certifications cost money, guys. It's $100, right, 99 bucks to take a professional or an associate. And then for the advanced exams, roughly $20. Or if you're looking at a specialty exam like a certified SolidWorks simulation pro, that's 50 bucks, right? Okay, and we'll talk about how to get certification vouchers on your current uh, <clears throat> on your current subscription. That's part of what this is about. So again, let me show you how to get started. Um, hopefully, you guys are capturing this website, right? Um, so from GoEngineer.com, from our training dropdown, you'll find SolidWorks certification. Okay, and I'm going to highly recommend that everybody, regardless of their level with the tool, run out and pursue the associate. Some of you might say, well, why? That's beneath me. Well, here's why, <laughs> okay? At SolidWorks World, I attended a breakout that said certification, what is it worth? And uh, not sure what happened there, but uh, okay, guess they're touching the, uh, the cord that has a short in it. In any case, back to my SolidWorks World story, I attended it because I was really, really interested to find out, yeah, what is the certification worth? And while I was in that session, the uh, doctorate fellow from Purdue was, had done multiple studies, right? They cold called companies and found out um, how their hiring practices were. Uh, especially because he, like me, had the alphabet soup, as Gerald said before, of certifications. And much to his dismay, and my surprise as well, is that it didn't really matter whether it was an associate, a professional, or an expert. That really wasn't the main concern. The main concern was, is the candidate certified, yes or no? Okay. Now, obviously, once you get into this, you'll see that there are worlds of difference. But you know what? I mean, a good friend of mine, and I'll leave his name out of this, but he knows who he is if he's watching this. Okay, he had been laid off from a metal co company of I think 15 years he was employed there. And every time he'd call in to support, 
It was usually some surfacing questions, really complicated stuff. And usually the first five things that I would suggest to him, he not only had already done, but he was explaining to me why it wasn't gonna work. And at one point in time, uh, when we needed to hire another tech, I'm like, we need that guy. Obviously we weren't gonna, you know, mess with that, but that that's the caliber of skill level that he had. My point in stating this is when he got laid off, I had that same phone call. Hey, did you get certified? The answer was no, Joe, I know, I know I've been in all your classes. I know your spiel on it. I really need to do it, but I haven't. Well, at that point, obviously, <laughs> I said, all right, well, keep me posted. Um, and he went an entire month with zero interviews, no callbacks, nothing. And that shocked me. And when he called me back, I'm like, OK, let's go ahead and look at the certification. Right. And um, open up my classroom to him so he could get certified. And yeah, within a week, he was getting phone calls. And within a month, he had a really great job. So my point is somebody with the actual skills where I would want to hire on my team to do this level couldn't find a job. I really don't want that to be you guys. Please hear me. Okay. After uh, doing the first robotics at Westwood, okay, the main mentor quit his day job and became a teacher at the school. And he came through all my classes teaching solders. This is a good story, right? Uh, stay with me. He also believes in certification. His high schoolers are getting certified. What does that mean? <laughs> now you're having to compete with high schoolers. What's up with that? Okay, we created this mess, guys. I got to say, SolidWorks is an amazing program. We can all use it. We can make things look really good. But what happened is too many companies were hiring these hotshots and getting garbage work out of it. Okay, that's why these certifications are important. Again, it's of our own making. Some of us, you know, enjoyed it when we were able to do some stuff and learn along the way. And, you know, that's where we're at. So, all right, let's take a look at this certification page here. So that way you guys can see what we're talking about here. Okay, for the certification page, right? By the way, it is also an advertisement for training. Yes, please, I'd love to see you all in my classroom. Okay, but bottom line, uh, if we look at the associate, okay. And by the way, we will eventually have a page for each one of the certs right now. We have associate and professional, and um, the drawings one should be up next month. I'm trying to get time with our webmaster uh, to do that. He's really, really busy, but uh, the drawings advanced cert will be coming up too at some point, and this thing is not going to scroll. I'm going to ignore the projector folks and uh, just talk for the video here. Uh, so when you're looking at the associate page here, uh, it has an introduction that explains what the associate is. And then we have a quote right here from Tim Humphreys from Edwards Life Sciences. I said, I've been working with him on this, right? His quote here is earning your CSWA certification will advance your career as a user. It will help you to gain confidence in your skills and set yourself apart. And then company benefit right here, he nails it. As a manager of a CSWA user, it will help to ensure a baseline of competency and to build that community of users that I was just describing, right? That's his objective, okay? <clears throat> what skills are might be required to pass the CSWA? Well, they're listed here, right? Um, and I say might because there are multiple versions of the exam, okay? The idea though, is that you should be familiar with all of this when you approach it. Uh, how do I pre prepare for the CSWA? There's a 20 minute, uh, I guess, tips and tricks. And oh, by the way, uh, <laughs> you know, recommendations that I have, like including even simple stuff like 
hey, make sure to use the restroom before, you know, locking yourself in the room to take the test. Okay, especially if the time clock is intimidating to you, you're not going to want to waste time doing stuff that you could have taken care of before you sat down to take the test. Okay, and then obviously training if you haven't been through our SolidWorks Essentials course, that is vital to helping you get that good base, <clears throat> excuse me, good baseline. And then we do have a prep course. Okay, and then scrolling down here, certification frequently asked questions. Here we go. Why become certified? I think we're kind of talking about that right now. Uh, what are the goals of the certification? I covered that too. Basically, we're trying to find out where everybody's at. Okay. Um, yes, there is also a certification directory. So once you've earned your cert, your name will go into a database that everybody can see. Okay. And towards the end here, I can open it. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Daily. Yeah. Sure. No, no, no. This is strictly a SolidWorks corporate managed database. And um, the only reason you wouldn't be listed is under user preferences. You can choose whether or not your name shows up in the list. So um, take my card. We will make sure that we get your name on that list. Okay. Towards the end, because I'm trying to cover a lot and I'm I think you guys, I know we're probably already going late. I'm gonna blow up the clock a little bit, but I wasn't the first, okay? Others blew up the clock too. Uh, <laughs> but this is important, <clears throat> okay? Tell your significant other that, yeah, that presenter, he just wouldn't let us go. That's fine, all right? Uh, I'll take it on the chin for you. <laughs> Let's make sure you get it right. <clears throat> okay, um, yes, there's a certification directory. We'll look at that. Uh, by the way, you can review past exam results, and each one of these does have a video in it that I've made, right, so for answering those questions, but you can review your past exam results. The whole idea of that is you can find out where you went wrong, and then now you know what you need to go study. So there's benefit in that, okay. Um, this other one, how do I validate SolidWorks candidates? That one is during a certification presentation I was giving. I put out a poll to find out how companies were currently, you know, looking at new hires. Like, um, do you just believe what they say on the resume or do you have an in-house test? Which, yeah, that's another popular answer. And then of course, my answer is use the official certification as that litmus test. Okay, um, and then how do you verify a certification is real? Each certification has on it a uh, code, right? A uh, certification ID. And when we take a look at the directory a little bit later, I'll show you that there's a way to look stuff up, okay? So not only is your name in lights, but when you get a cert, you'll have that code in there, okay? And then you can look up that code and this is the anti-fraud thing, right? Something we all need these days um, to prove that it's you and your certification. Okay. And then of course, the videos that should not have taken the longest time, but nevertheless did, uh, setting up a SolidWorks ID or a customer portal. Okay. Uh, sounds simple, just signing up for a website. Long story short, it took about four months of back and forth with SolidWorks to get a usable workflow. And not to belabor the point here, but there's actually two potential ways to make a SolidWorks ID. If you have an administered account, i.e. large company that has a, uh, I'll say an IT guy that's claimed this role, they need to be actively reaching out to you, the user, and inviting you into that system. Again, if this is something that you're having trouble with, call me like th this is a, a big deal and the reason I needed to document this stuff is it's administration minutia that you don't have time for I get it it is minutia and I you know we should be able to help you get through that and you know why did I choose uh, inspiration for my presentation here well it's because we all procrastinate 
I do it too, right? Until the timing's just right, we put things off until there's an emergency and now we have to do it. And, you know, plan ahead, folks. Be prepared, right? Boy Scouts motto. Uh, right. How do I create a virtual tester ID? Um, so there's actually two accounts, right? The one with the company you work with, that's your SolarX ID. And then the certification uh, virtual tester account. This has to do with uh, the one that you'll keep for your career, <laughs> okay? So whether you earned a cert five years ago, 10 years ago, three years ago, whatever it is, that account stays with you through your career. So I actually recommend that people use their home email address for this one. All right. Now I was talking about getting free certification vouchers, right? Which uh, yeah, I'll just scroll down here. The next section just talks about additional study materials. Uh, so part of your Solders customer portal account, uh, you'll gain access to the my.solders.com prep course. Okay, uh, there's some training books and guides that you can look at, specifically David Planchard, who <laughs> recognized the name, Marie Planchard, head of Solders Education. Yes, this is her husband, right? Dave has written the official guide to the certified Solders associate exams, plural, right? So for the price of one book, you get a study guide for multiples there. Okay, and then another book that I highly recommend, uh, Solders Basic Tools by Go Engineer's very own Paul Tran. Okay, you can scope those out. Uh, scrolling down here, SolidWorks Part Reviewer. Okay, 3dcontentcentral.com, another place you guys should be familiar with, right? It's an online parts repository that uh, you can find different models. Uh, specifically though here, the Part Reviewer catalog has a lot of great models that you can download uh, what makes them great, though, is the fact that they've been documented or added comments on every single feature. So in terms of learning, I can't understate the need to look at models that others have built and roll through it. Analyze how they did it. You don't necessarily have to judge, or if you do, keep it in your head, okay? Um, but learn from it. Good or bad, you're going to learn something when you're rolling through the model. Okay, these part reviewer models, you know, three different categories. Uh, you'll be able to download stuff, roll through it, and see how they built it. And yeah, let's see here. Let me just go right into moderate models here. Um, you'll find like a honeycomb foil ornament, right? That's going to have the crisscross patterns, et cetera. Partridge in a pear tree or a rocking horse. Etc. You know, what? let me go after complex. I was looking for some of the superhero stuff. That way, again, it'll give you guys stuff to download. Okay, so when I take a look here at the uh, advanced models here, you'll find things like Wonder Woman's tiara or the Flash's mask, right? So some surfacing in here, yes, I'm in the advanced category, but if that's where you're at, you know, download some of these, roll through it. You can always edit feature, edit sketch, read the comment that the author had to leave behind. All good stuff. Okay. And by the way, there is a sample exam for the associate. Okay, you can take it once a month until you pass, right? After that, um, you would then you obviously go go on to the real test, okay? Now, uh, how do I get a subscription voucher? Let me go ahead and pull this up here. And I'm gonna mute myself. And that's right, I can't scrub when it's minimized, but effectively, let's see here. Of course, it took away my scrubbing ability. Here we go. Okay, so here you're gonna need two different voucher, I'm sorry, two different accounts. Your SolidWorks ID, right? That's with your company, the paid subscription and your virtual tester ID. That's gonna be the testing client, okay? And after you do that, <clears throat> the way the process works, uh, you would log in to your customer portal as the live is not streaming. 
live necessarily, but effectively you guys online, you can see I've logged in with my customer portal. And then I can go down to this dollar sign icon for the subscription offer for uh, the subscription offer for SolidWorks customers. And when you click start here, it makes you log in with your SolidWorks ID, right? So this is the point where you can get those voucher codes. And if you take a look here, every six months, right? So that means once between January through the end of June, and then once between July and the end of December, you can claim three different vouchers. Now, these vouchers only last six months. Why did they do that? Well, they used to give away credits, but what happened? Procrastination. People sat on the credits. They collected them. They collected dust. They went nowhere. Okay. So more along the lines here, when you claim these codes, they'll last six months, right? So you can claim an associate or a professional, one of those, right? And then an advanced topic, drawing tools or mold making or sheet metal, surfacing or weldments, one of those, right? And then one specialty topic, an additive manufacturing, electrical associate. I had a question in the back about electrical earlier. There it is, SIM associate, right? Uh, sustainability, uh, going green design. You have CAM, MBD, PDM, all the other alphabet soup ones, I'll agree with that terminology for them. But uh, in all seriousness, CAM, right? SolidWorks CAM, CAMWorks now inside of SolidWorks. There's a cert for that. MBD, model based definition. That, of course, is the paperless, uh, you know, going to like a PDF for all of your product manufacturing information or model based definition information to get parts built. And then PDM, product data management, file management. That's intended for PDM administrators, those are, that are setting up your vault and maintaining it. And then of course, the simulation professional, that is FEA, right? And when you total these all up, so core exam, 99 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever for easy math, uh, $20 for the advanced topic and $50 for the specialty topic, you're looking at $170 every six months that, well, if you guys didn't claim credits, I'm sorry, voucher codes between January and June, you lost that. Don't let this next one get lost either. Okay. So you can do that. Um, yes. So basically you get one set of codes per license. So if your company has 10 licenses, that's 30 codes, absolutely. And not, all, not every user will necessarily care about certification, right? So as I scroll down here on this page, there we go. So right here at the bottom, if there's an asterisk next to one of these, it just shows you you've already achieved that certification, but Remember, these voucher codes are not node locked to a single user. You can give them out to whoever you want. Okay, so if you have 10 licenses and half of your team doesn't even care about the certification, and you're like, yeah, but that's important and I want to be an expert. Well, then you can simply ask them to log in. Uh, you log into your virtual tester, then you hit the dollar sign icon and you say, hey, can you put in your SolidWorks ID for me, please? And then they can do that and you got extra codes. Cha-ching, right? We'll help you do this for free. It just requires time and effort on your part. Okay. All right, so moving forward there. Uh, this is all up to you. And yeah, it, once they give you the codes, um, you'll be able to take a look at those codes when you come back later. And uh, you could obviously write them down or uh, you know, copy and paste them into a notepad, but honestly not really necessary, okay? Because you'll be able to come back and get them. And yeah, these codes, even though they're grayed out, they also did expire long ago, if you can see there. Uh, in any case, you get the idea. This is just an example of how that's possible. 
right? Or maybe you only have one license and you do want that expert and you don't want to wait two and a half years or whatever it is to get those voucher codes. You can purchase credits here, right? So I talk about how to purchase credits on this one. Okay. And by the way, the uh, certificate, I'm sorry, the uh, purchase for certifications does use PayPal now, right? So for those of you that are like me that hate giving out your payment information to any website, I don't care how secure they claim they are, I'll trust one person, right? One place. But beyond that, any case, um, yes, they take PayPal now, which is great. So you'll be able to buy your own voucher codes. And by the way, this is also targeting hiring managers, right? If you really think about it, if I spend a hundred bucks to buy an associate credit, I can then take that credit, turn it into a voucher code, and then send that to my candidate and say, hey, we might interview you, but before we do, I need you to take this test. And you can totally see the score that they got too. And by the way, this is another win-win because if that candidate gets their associate and you, it's still not a good fit, that candidate now has their cert for their own search, okay? Or even quite the reverse. Maybe somebody doesn't quite pass the exam, but there's other stuff that's really important to your company. You'll immediately know, hey, I need to send this guy to training. Right. I, I'm, I'm at least I know where he's at. And that's really trying to keep everybody honest. Right. So <clears throat> that's kind of the big deal. Right? So. So there's how to um, purchase credits, how to use a test voucher. Once you get a free voucher code, this just basically describes how to use it in the virtual tester client. And then managing test credits. This would describe how to take a purchase credit and turn it into a voucher code, like a trackable voucher code. And then you can see how they did on the exam. All right. Um, again, this is a resource center, right? Because we all go to these presentations. It's great stuff. Hopefully my notes are legible after I leave, right? I've been there. I've taken those notes. They've been not always that useful because sounds great today, but then the weekend happens and other things happen. And then you come back, you're like, wow, what was I writing there? But it was fun while I was there. Um, this resource center is here for you guys. Um, my card is up front. When we uh, finish here, I will make sure you guys get that. But <clears throat> now the certified associate, Let's take a look here. There's 14 questions on the associate. Okay, they will give you a maximum of 240 points. You are required to get 165 points to pass and they give you 180 minutes in which to do this. Okay. All right, <clears throat> so with that, I do want to talk about a winning attitude, right? And some of you might recognize this gentleman. It's a quote that I wanna share. And this quote, I know I gotta walk around the whole room before it pops up. Okay. As he hangs his head and walks back to his computer. Okay, um, here it is, Michael Jordan. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 500 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. Let's see here. I failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. Okay, I am showing you this because, number one, he's an amazing basketball player. Even though he beat our sons, right, um, <laughs> in that amazing game, nevertheless, I respect the man and he understands that you don't always win. But what you do is you pick yourself up off of the ground, brush yourself off and try again. It's that perseverance. So if you do fail a cert, nobody needs to know that. It's between you and the tester client and then try again. 
because what we're looking for is where you're at and you learn from those mistakes. Okay. All right. And uh, so along with me here, Joe Engineer, right? The change danger on our models is typically extremely high, right? So we want to prevent redesign by getting better with the tools that we're using. And uh, kind of going along with my theme here of the virtual uh, <clears throat> virtual recreation area, I have a bunch of trail signs. Uh, yes, those are pretty accurate. That's because I found and downloaded the official handbook for you know, the trail signs that our Forest Service uses. Great stuff. And in fact, right there's the hyperlink if you're interested in those, uh, those sign uh, what do you want to call it? Requirements or sizes, et cetera. So cool stuff. And then here's just some picture credits of the models that I've built. And then there's Michael Jordan in his uh, quote where you can find that. And then additional image credits from Pixabay. And they offer royalty free commercial stuff, right? I just like to attribute their, their hard work. And so here is my information. Again, my name is Joseph Richter, and I look forward to helping you on your certification journey. So let's get started. Any questions? They're speechless. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> How about from the online audience? Sorry? They're okay, okay, all right. All right, well, I'll let the online audience go and then I'll talk to the live audience here. All right, thank you guys for joining us. We'll talk to you later, bye-bye. Yeah, but he's not, I don't think he's on his mic, so I'm just going to turn off Zoom. Oh, wait, I can't. Never mind. Sorry. I forgot. He's sharing his screen. Never mind. Go ahead. I take my headset off. Was there another question? Sorry, Dad. I'll call you back. I'm in front of a room of 20 people. Love you. Bye. I apologize, folks. That was... Not planned. Okay, uh, here we go. So on the certification directory, we're going to look at Arizona. Okay. Oh, sorry. And from here, uh, your name, sir? Nick Fletcher. Okay, let's look up last name here. Okay, so Fletcher. Hmm, looks like you are not listed, but like I said, that doesn't mean anything that just means that you have chosen not to be displayed in the online directory. So Uh-huh.
So with the directory here, I'm going to answer your question. It just takes me a few seconds to get to where I need to go. So um, let's see here. If you're not listed, let's see here. So got to scrub my own video. I spent a lot of time and effort doing this. Here it is. List an online directory. Okay. Got to hit yes. Okay. Because by default, it's set to no. All right. But, um, and by the way, the things you won't be able to change is your name. I mentioned anti fraud. So everything else you can change. Now, some of my students have been certified, but moved on to other companies and they stranded their account with their company. And so the email's dead. I've been able to work with Yannick over in Solid Earth Certification and get some of those accounts rerouted to the right people. Personal, okay, then you should be okay with that. Um, so yeah, basically uh, you just go to the settings here at the top. Okay, it would have you log in with your uh, credentials, with your password, whatever it is, and then you just change it. Right. And by the way, you can add your LinkedIn right here. OK, so not only will you be listed in the directory, but you can have your LinkedIn right there. So if I go back to the directory here. Um, so right here. Ion, uh, Ian, rather, one of my students, in fact, uh, you can see when he got his professional back in 2013. Right, and there's his LinkedIn account right there. So absolutely, yeah, um, it's it's a great place to look. And I guess in a roundabout way too, folks, if you're out of work, which I don't want anybody to ever be out of work, right? Uh, this is another way to find out which companies most likely use SolidWorks, right? If there's a certified user there and they're in the directory, just saying. <laughs> No, uh, it's a pretty good chance that they have it. Um, and then go ahead. Sure. Uh, right. Uh, let's see here. A, B, C, D, E, F. There's Falk, Farley, Ferris, Fisher. Jason Ferris, another one of my students. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. No worries, we'll, we'll get that worked out. But each star that you see here, right? That's a cert that they earned. And again, it lists them all out here, it delineates them. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Um, and let me log in here just to talk about how to vet out a uh, certification, right? So, I don't know, let's pick something that you guys can all earn. Uh, so yeah, Surface Pearl. Okay, so right here is the cert ID. Right, that's right, that lags. There it is, I highlighted it. Um, and so if I copy that serial number, right, uh, we can take a look at uh, validating a certificate. Here it is, the checkbox. When you validate a certificate, right, you just, plug in the certification there, uh, the ID, which by the way, if any user hands over a resume, they say, hey, I'm a certified solid or surface pro, whatever, uh, they better have that code after that cert. Otherwise you have the right to ask them, hey, do you have that code? And if they're clueless, then you probably know that, it, I guess there's a small chance they're certified, but probably not. Okay, uh, nobody lies on a resume, right? Okay, <laughs> 303, uh, do the glass break code, validate a certificate, and it will say certificate valid. It'll explain who earned it and when. That's why you cannot change that in the virtual tester account. Like that's your account for your career. Uh, after all, they didn't want somebody to earn a bunch of certs and then just sell that account right because that would be bad okay any other questions on that just, just to recap, you said, uh, 
three vouchers for each six months. So yeah, I guess six a year if you want. Yeah. Yeah, once between January and the end of June. And then, yes. So, I mean, it's equivalent to shelfware. Hopefully you guys have heard that term where you bought this amazing seed of SolidWorks and you know, let's say you buy SolidWorks Professional and you don't do much rendering, but marketing needs to. You have a SolidWorks Visualize license, right? That's just sitting there. That somebody in marketing doing cool images of your models could be using. I guess it's cool once you learn about it, but until you learn about it, it's shelfware. It sits on the shelf, collects dust, does nothing. You lost the value in it. And I'm just encouraging you to recoup that value that 170 every six months and use it. And if you run out of time, give the voucher code to somebody else who will use it, right? Yeah, it's, it's all possible. And I believe, Gerald, you're able to give uh, voucher codes to your students, right? Yeah, so um, cool. All right, any more, it looks like, go ahead. And I'll obviously hang out after. Okay, any more from the online crowd? I'm gonna put my headset down again. Okay, thanks guys.